Welcome to this audio flip chart on price versus fundamental value. My name is Manfred Frühwirth. I'm professor of finance at WU Wien, which is Vienna University of Economics and Business. The purpose of this audio flip chart is to show you that in behavioral finance and also in practice, the price of a security does not always match its fundamental value. In this context, I will especially describe the phenomenon excessive volatility. I want to illustrate this phenomenon at the example of a stock. In this chart, we see on the horizontal axis the time. As we are going to the right, time elapses. On the vertical axis, we see the fundamental value in black and the price in red. The price is what you can observe at stock exchange. This is the amount that you have to pay if you are buying the stock. And this is the amount that you get if you are selling the stock. The fundamental value, however, is the true value of the stock. This is also called the fair value or the intrinsic value. You can determine the fundamental value by performing a sound valuation of the stock, for instance, by discounted cash flow valuation or by using the dividend discount model. You can easily understand the conceptual difference between price and fundamental value by remembering an old quotation from advertising. Price is what you pay, value is what you get. I created here a chart for the fundamental value that shows two important facts that we can usually observe in reality. First, we see that over the long run, the fundamental value shows a positive trend. This is due to economic growth. Second, we see that this does not happen linearly, but this happens in waves. These waves represent the business cycle. In neoclassical finance, the price of a security should match its fundamental value. This is different in behavioral finance and also in practice. Concerning the relationship between price and fundamental value in practice, there are some interesting facts shown on this flip chart. The first fact is the price of a stock does not always equal the fundamental value. By contrast, what we see here is that the price exactly matches the fundamental value, only exceptionally. The second fact. The price fluctuates far more than the underlying fundamental value. This phenomenon has been first pointed out by Professor Robert Schiller from Yale. This was already in 1981. He showed that stock prices fluctuate significantly more than the underlying fundamental value. This is called excessive volatility. In 2013, he received the Nobel Prize, among others, for this finding. The most important reasons of this stock price behavior are the extrapolation bias and herding. These are two concepts that you can easily look up in the behavioral finance literature. That is why this phenomenon is also called irrational exuberance. Extrapolation bias means that after a stock price has gone up, investors believe that the stock price is increasing, instead of saying the stock price has increased. To benefit from future stock price increases, they are buying the stock, which drives the stock price beyond the fundamental value. Conversely, after the stock price has gone down, 
the investors believe that the stock price is decreasing instead of saying the stock price has decreased. To avoid future stock price losses, they are selling the stock, which reduces the stock price even further and even beyond the fundamental value. All this is even reinforced by the herding phenomenon. If the stock price has gone up, this means that many investors must have bought this stock. To be with the herd, other investors are also buying, even though the stock is already overvalued. This drives up the stock price even more. A similar logic occurs after the stock price has gone down. Other investors want to be with the herd and therefore are selling even though the stock is already undervalued. This drives the stock price down more than what is fundamentally justified. The third fact is there cannot be a too big divergence between the price and the fundamental value. Sooner or later, the price has to revert to the fundamental value. If the undervaluation gets too severe, more and more investors understand that the stock is undervalued. Therefore, they are buying the stock and this pushes the stock price up. Similarly, if the overvaluation, which means the bubble, gets too strong, more and more investors understand that the stock is overvalued. Therefore, they are selling the stock and this pushes the stock price down. Andrei Kostolani, the Hungarian stock exchange guru, once compared this phenomenon with a dog on a leash and his master walking on a sidewalk. The dog may run in front of the master and may run behind the master, but it always returns and oscillates only in the interval determined by the leash. Transferring this example to stock exchange, the master is the fundamental value, which means the economy, whereas the dog is the stock price. The number of examples of this relationship between price and fundamental value is huge. One good example is the Great Depression. This is shown on page 2. In this table, we can see the historical returns on the US stock market in the years around the Great Depression. We see that following a huge stock exchange gain in 1928, the Great Depression emerged with a series of severe stock exchange losses from 1929 to 1932. Obviously, after some years of heavy stock exchange losses, the stock market realized that this decline was exaggerated. As a result, the stock market went up tremendously between 1933 and 1936. Another good example is the building and burst of the dot-com bubble around the year 2000. This is shown on page 3. In this table, we can see the historical returns on the US stock market around the year 2000. We see that from 1995 to 1999, a huge stock market bubble built up. As is natural with bubbles, when the bubble gets too big, it bursts. This was in the year 2000, and the next two years brought strong losses at stock exchange. After a few years of severe losses, the stock market realized that this decline was too much. As a result, the stock market again went up tremendously from 2003 to 2007. This was the time when the so-called real estate bubble built up. After that, the bubble burst, 
leading to the financial crisis in 2008. Again, followed by a strong rebound in 2009 and 2010. From these two examples, we see that stock markets are extremely volatile. To be more precise, excessively volatile. The problem resulting from this excessive volatility is that retail investors often buy close to the all-time high price because they think that the stock market is increasing and they sell close to the minimum price within a wave because they think that the stock market is decreasing. For instance, after the dot-com bubble has built up, many retail investors bought high-tech stocks in the late year 1999 at extremely high prices. Also, after the burst of the real estate bubble in 2008, many retail investors lost their nerves and sold their stocks at relatively low prices. This is interesting because it is a strategy that none of us would apply when buying, for instance, clothes. When you are buying clothes, you try to buy them during the sales period, when they are cheap. With stocks, however, many retail investors do exactly the opposite. They buy stocks at high prices and sell them at low prices. As empirical data shows, the phenomenon of excessive volatility exists not only for stocks, but for many asset classes. For instance, also for real estate prices, for commodity prices, and for interest rates. Summing up, what we learned from this audio flip chart is, first, for psychological reasons, the price of a financial asset does not always reflect its true value. Second, the price changes exaggerate the changes in the fundamental value in both directions, so both with upward movements and with downward movements. And this creates a so-called short-term momentum. And third, we can rely on the fact that the price cannot deviate too much from the fundamental value. There's always some pressure on the price to move into the direction of the fundamental value. And this pressure gets stronger the more severe the mispricing is. And this creates so-called long-term mean reversion. From an investor's point of view, we saw in this audio flip chart how and why financial market bubbles develop, why bubbles burst, and that after a crash, the prices usually go up. I hope you enjoyed this audio flip chart. Thank you very much for watching.